I just got back from two weeks away. I have not done any yard work at all in that time. I did have somebody helping a little bit on the green while I was gone, mowed it a few times. The robo mower did everything else. The irrigation system did what it could do. I'll explain that in a minute. But I used two things that I believe were somewhat of a silver bullet or a magic recipe that helped maintain everything while I was gone. And I'm gonna show you what those two things are because I don't think they're being used enough together. As you can probably notice from the last video, everything back here was dead where I scalped it down. That's all come back really well. Everything else is looking great. Density is looking great. But let me tell you what I did before I left to try to hedge my bets and help my lawn be better prepared for not really having any care. I'm gonna go ahead and bust out the gas mower, mow everything down, get it cleaned up, and then let's talk about some of these things. So everything around that was not maintained is pretty overgrown. There's a lot of weeds around in the beds. A lot of things shifted just in a two week time frame of not having me be out here. So I have some catch up to do. One thing that happened repeatedly while I was out of town is there's utility work going on down the street and the power was out here at the house multiple times because it was being switched on an awful lot and ended up tripping the breaker that ran the sprinkler system. There was consistent water for the first five days that I was gone and then there wasn't. And then we got a little bit of rain once it was established and the breaker was reset, that was on Sunday, the systems ran again. But from what I could tell from my calendar, the upper lawn area that's not on the irrigation system only watered uh, three times while I was gone, not very much. And the other area I think only watered four or five times. So you can see the difference on what watered three times versus five times just in the way the lawn looks right now. So that's something to kind of take note of. Ah, oh, it's so much better. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm rocking the Umbros. You guys remember these things? I was having a conversation with my wife about these and how this was just a pinnacle of style in 1989, 1990. We decided to order a couple of pair and I'm just happy for it. Anyway, that looks much better. We're cleaned up out here. You can see just how gorgeous the grass is looking. Thick, beautiful. Everything functioned like it should except for those minor glitches. So again, we had some power outages that kept the robo mower from running, which when that happens, and if that happens for a couple of days, then the grass gets pretty thick and that thing's gonna struggle. And today it was definitely thick. But let's get back over to the new and the Hydrotain. So I've never used Hydrotain before. I've used a new on the golf green before. Um, that will be part of a regular program on the green from here on out. Um, maybe for going out of town and things like that, it wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and put it up here on the main lawn. But for the most part, that is going to be strictly for the green, is using the Anu down there. Now, if you're unfamiliar with that, it's a product from New Farm. It's a plant growth regulator. It slows down top growth and increases lateral growth in turf, which is really nice. So you don't have to mow as often. Now, a couple of precautions with that. One, if you're prone to fungus, uh, your recovery is going to be really slow if you're using a PGR. Two, it will last you forever. The uh, bag I have, which I think is a two pound bag or something like that, is gonna last me years and years and years, which is great. So it's a long-term investment. It's about $165 for the bag, but for, if I was using it all over this whole place, it would still last me four or five or six years probably at the rate that it goes out. There's links below for the new product, all the details on it as I'm not running through the, exactly what they are in this video. Now, one of the benefits of that, which I do really like compared to something like Primo, um, you don't need to add iron. There's no bleaching of the turf. Hugely beneficial. It's, you don't have to do any extra steps. Just put it out and run it on its regularly scheduled rotation and you'll start to see that density increase and uh, the grass will grow much, much slower. Really, it was the most apparent because the green was getting cut uh, on the main body, but not on the fringes. The grass barely grew. Um, it looks like it maybe grew an inch over the course of a two week time frame, and that's under either irrigation or rainfall and really no stress per se. So then let's talk about the Hydrotain. I also use that. I put out a bottle, uh, a quart bottle over the 5,000 square feet here, covered every area, and there is no sign of any stresses, but again, I wasn't here to see how we went from intense heat and then it kind of cooled off uh, for the last little bit and we got a little bit of rainfall. Somewhere around an inch of rain fell last week, uh, nothing the week before. And again, the power outages kept the water from being on like it should have. So right now, technically, 
the water is in a deficit. But the only place you can really tell that is where I don't have my irrigation system. That's the only place. But I wanna to touch on that here real quick as well. Since everything I'm doing is automatic, a power outage is detrimental. And the mower went off, both the irrigation systems went off, and they were offline for days. The volume of water that I get here, and this is why I wanted to run both systems. I'm running my old system the exact same way I used to. It's running the same way, no changes. This is the only new spot. The density and the health and growth of this turf in the irrigation section is light years ahead of the other one now. So now that we've come through the stresses, it's funny how this thing is flipped. We've had one side that was sort of stressing a little bit more because I kept certain products off of it. Then I caught everything up to the same. Well, as soon as the heat came on, now I have one side that's flourishing and the other side that's sort of gone downhill just slightly. You could just tell, it doesn't look bad, especially at the summertime. And it means I think I will probably end up putting in my extra head for my irrigation system up there in the middle because this is like velvet out here. It's so thick and beautiful. So there's the part two to that. Since I have a higher volume of water going here than I do in the other spot, this is now getting more fertilizer. Before I left, I put three quarters of a gallon of green effect and that's what was feeding it while I was gone. So I would assume by now it's, I put it on the slowest setting. It may be empty, it might not be empty, but it's been feeding whenever it did irrigate. But again, so out here in this area, I only had three irrigation cycles. Same up there, only three irrigation cycles. Down on the green, that one's actually scheduled to still come on every day for a short burst. Uh, that one ended up missing six or seven total days out of 14. So it seems as though it really did the trick. So how I'm going to close this is like this. This is going to be a major encouragement. If you want to see something like this in your own lawn, if you are running blue, actually, if, honestly, it really doesn't matter. If you're running bluegrass, fescue, rye, I don't really care what you're running. If you do that three combos that I talked about, the hydrotain, the anu, and the green effect in your summertime applications, the change is extremely noticeable, number one, extremely pleasing, number two, and will lower your overall maintenance so that you're not having to be out here quite as often and still have an absolutely beautiful yard. So there you go. Talk to you guys soon.